Columbia, and I'm happy that you're with us. But today I noticed that a lot of students are still struggling with unitary governments. So I wanted to make a video to quickly outline some deeper facts about unitary governments. And hopefully, by the end of this, you'll be an expert in unitary governments. Maybe, maybe not, but we'll see. Okay, the first thing you need to start with is the basic definition, and that is a unitary government is a government where the power is held by one central authority. So think unicycle has one wheel, unicorn has one horn sticking out of their head, unibrow people have one eyebrow, okay, they're rocking the unibrow. So when we're talking about unitary governments, you could mean one person, you could also mean one central authority, as in like a group that makes all the rules and laws in a country. Um, another thing that you might be talking about is, if you're talking about unitary, you might get it confused with um, autocracy, okay? Because autocracy, we've taught, means one person is in complete control. But they're not the same. They have some similarities, but they're not the same. For more info on that, you can watch my other YouTube video where we compare and contrast unitary and autocracy with a Venn diagram. Um, it's on my channel, so just go check that out. If you've already seen that and you're still confused, then before we go any further, I want you to check out this. So in a unitary government, you have one strong central authority. That's where all the power is. However, sometimes in a unitary government, the central government is willing to share power with regional authorities, but they really don't have any real power. Any power they do have has just been given to them by the central authority, and it can be taken back in a second. Next, if a country is unitary, they're not always an autocracy. Sometimes they might be an autocracy, but not always. And finally, unitary could mean one person, or it could mean one legislative body, which would technically be a group. Okay, welcome back. Now we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going through more information and more facts and more details about unitary. So let's go. All right. In a unitary government, the central government, the central authority has all the power in terms of government. Now let's pause right here because we're not talking about how the citizens are involved. In a unitary government, citizens could have all the power and vote, or in the unitary government, citizens might have no power and not get to vote, like most autocracies. However, we're not really going to mention the citizen because the, de the definition doesn't really tell us much about that. This just tells us about where the rules and laws in the country come from. Do they come from one place? Do they come from many places? So with unitary, we're talking about all the rules and laws coming from one place. Next, in a unitary government, like most governments, they have a constitution. Okay, So most countries, most governments have a constitution. The, co the constitution in a unitary government, it outlines the power, responsibilities, and people of the central government. So it goes into great detail about who is in power, the people that are going to be in power, and how they get there. It outlines the power they have over the rest of the country, and it also outlines the responsibilities of whether it's just the one person in power or whether it's a group like the parliament or whatever. Next, the central government, if it wants to, if they want to, they can give power to or create lower levels of government. So if the central government has some things they would like to delegate to some lower levels of government, they can go ahead and do that. The catch being that they can take the power back at any time. They can change it or take it back at any time. So if the central government really is the one with all the power, and they might share that from time to time, but if they don't want that, that lower level of government to be in power anymore, they can take it back or create a different level of government. So this is comparable to like your teachers in class. Your teachers, maybe they might have groups in the classroom and they designate leaders in every group and they give the leaders some power within that group. So as the teacher, I might say, okay, leaders, you can tell your group to do this. You can, you can ask your groupmates to do this. You can lead group discussions, blah, blah, blah. I'm giving some power to the leaders of each group in my class. 
However, let's say little Johnny, who's sitting over here, is using his power as the leader to smack people in the face. Well, that's a problem. So I'm probably going to take that power away from Johnny and give it to somebody else. So that's kind of how that works. Finally, local governments, these lower levels of government, they follow directions of the central government. So the lower levels of government only get to do those things that the central government tells them to do or allows them to do. So again, the same metaphor with the teacher in class works. If the teacher gives little Johnny this power to do this with his group, then I'm giving Johnny the directions to do that. Okay, and I keep using the, the name Johnny. I'm not talking about any Johnny out there, so if your name is Johnny, I apologize that I'm using your name. But, um, so that's kind of how it works. And I've got just a little bit more to show you right now. For the last bit of our video today, we're going to talk about some real-world unitary governments. They are France. France has a unitary government. UK. The UK has a unitary government. Now, at this point, I should bring up, if you are a unitary government, you're not only going to be unitary. You might be, in the case of the United Kingdom, unitary you might be parliamentary democracy. You might also be a constitutional monarchy. Okay, United Kingdom has lots of different types of governments. And most countries don't only just have one type. So keep that in mind. Another example, Bolivia, which is in South America. And the final example we're going to mention is Cuba. Now, you might be kind of confused because Cuba has a dictator. Okay, right? Currently, it's Raul Castro. He was given power from his brother, um, Fidel Castro. And, um, but yeah, Cuba. Oh, man, Cuba. But they're a dictatorship. I don't understand. All right, well, United Kingdom and Cuba are both unitary. However, Cuba is a dictatorship or an autocracy, whereas the United Kingdom, not so much. They are a democracy. They can, the student or the citizens can vote in the United Kingdom. So, to help us with this, I made this handy-dandy chart. Handy dandy chart. Now, unitary governments. Again, there's one central authority. So, for the last time during this video, a unitary government could be one place. Could be a place. Like the parliament building in the UK. And there's the parliament. Now, they have lots of people in the parliament. See all those tiny people? They represent the people in the parliament. They're the ones that make the rules and laws in the UK. Now, however, they were all voted into power by the citizens. So they could be voted out of power in the next election by the citizens. So that is a type of unitary. However, unitary could also be... Dun, dun, dun! Could also be one person... Like this king here with his fancy throne and fancy dress robes. However, this type of unitary, one person, autocracy, is usually not voted into power. They might come into power by revolution, or they could come into power by being voted into power, and then they suddenly turn crazy and turn everything upside down. So, again, unitary. Could be one person. Could be one place, like the parliament, with all the people. Okay?